I'm Stephanie. And I'm Adam. And welcome to Meeple Talk. So this is Flag Dash this time. So this is another one from our Gen Con series of games that we happen to pick up. So this is a, a newly uh, minted, I guess you could say, it was originally a Kickstarter game, uh, wrapped up in March of 2016, and already available at the first Gen Con, which was hosted in August. Uh, uh, to 2016, of 2016, if you're 2016. watching this 10 years from now. So. Yeah, matter of months. <laughs> <laughs> in holograms. And so it was created by Kirk Dennison, also mm. brought to you by Peacekeeper Games. And let's just dive into it a little bit right here. So the game has this board, and it has six different characters, and your goal is to capture the team flag. You see the red and white flag on either side. Um, and I won't get into the rules. Stephanie will talk about that. So you, each team has three characters. You can see the cards relating to the three characters. And uh, they also have their own personal flags, uh, and that comes to play in the game as well. And so there are some action tokens. You can get additional actions. Here we have some uh, bonus player tokens. They have some special abilities the characters can do. And then, um, as I mentioned, you have the character cards here, and here are some special cards, again, that relate to special actions that these particular characters have. That's their unique actions. And then we move over to the cards. So each player has a set of eight cards, and all of the cards uh, have the same identical symbols for each player. And they also have seven priority tokens. I should say eight priority tokens. Uh, no, there are seven. Never mind. Um, so these indicate when you can take your action, and they are paired with the cards when you play the game. Um, and they also have additional actions that you can take. For example, you can... Use two different cards for this one. This one gives you three times that particular card, and so on and so forth. And uh, finally, you have these player screens. They have a set of uh, brief description of the rules on one side, and on the other side, a giant logo, and that's to keep your movement secret at the beginning of each round. All right, and if we go over generally how a turn goes, is that every player is going to have their hand, and behind their secret shield, they're going to choose... Uh, two of their priority tokens, as well as two of the particular actions or non-actions that they're going to take. So let's say we're just gonna do two of these in here. And what's gonna happen is that with their chosen actions, they're gonna put their priority tokens on top, and everyone will decide which one will be action number one and which one's action number two. Eventually, they're gonna have the reveal. So everyone who has their action number one, they're gonna flip it over. And in this case, uh, their priority token, they're going to determine who's going to go first. So the priority tokens determine your turn order. The lower the number, the earlier you go. If there happens to be a tie, each team or one side will have their tiebreaker uh, pawn. Uh, there's only one, and it flips back and forth between the two rounds. So that will decide who will go first if there is. Whatever their action is, they're going to try to resolve that action, whether it's from their main hand or a special player action that they may get. And the same thing goes around for now phase number two. So depending on the priority token, again, turn order may change in that turn, depending on what uh, the phase two part uh, is going to reveal for each player. If we go to the main board, this is what it's all about. So every team, you have your two runners, which are the ones on the edge. You singly will control your particular runner because that's your special character. And in the center, we have the defenders, both players on each uh, on the same side can control that defender. And so with your moves that you are choosing, one or two, you can assign that to the same player or between your runner and defender. It's entirely up to you how you're going to designate the movement. Uh, the overall goal, as you can see, the flags are on the opposite uh, ends of each uh, side of the board. And so the players are going to try to reach over, grab the flag and bring it back across the center line. Also to help you along the way, you also have tunnels, which in a way are like teleportation uh, portals there. Um, and generally movement is either going to be vertical or horizontal. That's And capturing the flag and bringing it to the other side is going to be one of the winning conditions. The other way to win, you'll notice that every character here has their different sash colors. If your player actually creates a collection of one of each color of your opponent's sashes, that is the second way to end the game and win. Mm -hmm. So, what did we think of this game? Thoughts? <laughs> you, can, well, you can start if you want. Well, right. okay. Let's, let's start with the, the basics here. So, okay. it is, I guess we can consider like a, a micro game, a mini game, 
pick up mm. a portable one. So if you are, and it, I, I can envision this game as if you're going on a family trip, you know, in a car or something, you're mm. making quick stops. You just want something, a little bit of entertainment, you know, in those short pauses of time. This is one is really useful because of the size of the board. It's a very small game. So it, the box is portable, game size is portable, fits on a small table if you're limited for space, especially if you're in a public area where you might have just mm -hmm. uh, short amounts of room to work with. So it's, um, I would say, probably a, a more family-oriented game, I guess you could say. The mm. rules are simple. It's not a complex game. And it is something that people of varying uh, abilities can just dive right into and go. If anyone's familiar with Capture the Flag, it's the same principle. Yeah. So I do give uh, credit to that portability and that mm -hmm. simple kind of compactness. Yeah. It's yeah. a very, it's a very, and it's a very short game. You can play a game in what, like ten minutes or fifteen yeah. minutes at the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But and it's all strategy. Um, yeah. There's no luck, as far as I know, um, because the cards mm -hmm. that you have in your hand. You have the choice of all of the cards. You don't draw cards. You don't ha manage your hand, except to the extent that um, you manage your tokens in, in the sense that the ones that you play out, you can't use them again until you use the uh, seven priority token to bring them all back to your hand. Um, but again, that's all choices that you make. And so, it's also individual mm -hmm. and a little bit of teamwork, too, because while you can decide and control your particular player, a little bit of bluffing on mm -hmm. the other side, but also a little bit of cross-communication with your teammate as well. So it incorporates is not only a strategy game, but it's one that you really should get involved and very interactive. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So um, my overall impression is that I think it's very... I think it's very cute in the sense that you got your little characters, you know, they're not just like mm -hmm. little pawns. They all have their own shapes that match the cards. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a little strategic game. And what I really like about it is, um, you know, with four players, you have your teammate and you might be discussing strategy. Mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, I'll go here and then you go that way. And then, oh, you know, what if they go in a straight line? Maybe we can put some, uh, the, you know, the defender in front mm -hmm. of them so they can't go there. And you're making these little strategies, right? And then you plan it out and then you see what happens. And in mm -hmm. each round. So it's kind of really a neat game. Uh, it's, a, it's an especially fun game um, for teams. Um, however, um, with three players, it's kind of awkward because one player is either is generally playing two hands, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a lot to manage, and it's not as much fun to be a single player on one side of a team. Um, two players we haven't played, but I'm guessing it's nothing like the four-player game where you have a, a, mm -hmm. a living person that you can plot with. I would um, have to agree with that. I think mm -hmm. it really is meant as a four-player game, even though it has variants where you can do two or three-player. Yeah. I think it's the floor, four that that version really kind of brings it out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's a big negative, but I would say it's very limiting in the sense mm -hmm. that it really only works as a four-player game, and there's no five-player or six-player, which would have been nice, but maybe that would have made that uh, a bigger game with more components and more expensive. Um uh, it does excel mm -hmm. as a really small game that you can play quickly at any time. And uh, and if you like strategy, I mean, if you really like strategy, you're really going to like this game because it's all strategy. And, and uh, yeah. Oh, and, I was going to say, and one it, thing we had mm -hmm. mentioned is yes. that this is side A. They've also got a flip side board. Mm -hmm. And also the rules also talk about different variations we can do when it comes to certain cards you eliminate mm -hmm. from your hand or certain types of restrictions to change the level of difficulty. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to bring out more of a challenge if you're into that. Yeah, and there's all sorts of different setups you can use. You can have like, you know, two cones and you have to go mm -hmm. through the cones as opposed to just going across the walkway. Mm -hmm. And you can mix up the different characters you're going to use, which character you're going to use for defense and which characters and they have this basic setup so you can just get going, you know, the first yeah. couple of games you play. But after that, you know, the sky is the limit. You can set it up any way you want and have a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So what, what I'd say is it really excels as a four-player game. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't really work very well. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think that's a, a, a really big negative. I think it's a really great little game. That's my mm. feeling. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say absolutely give it a try, pick it up. I guess the only uh, other negative it could be is just when it comes to the easy portability. I guess it depends too. If you're sitting at home, you've got your full stable space and stuff. If the board is really, you know, uh, easy to see, it could be that if you're playing on a larger surface, maybe it's kind of a little, uh, yeah. I guess, 
awkward to work with. Some people like the mm-hmm. size or feel of a larger display, a larger layout. Board. Yeah, I, I kind but, of that. That was almost like um, a criticism that I wasn't sure if I wanted to bring up. It, well, whether it is a criticism, but I kind mm-hmm. of feel like it would have been cooler if the board was a little bit bigger and the pieces were a little bit not not even necessarily the, the figures bigger, but the board it's bigger, so you feel like you've got more space and mm-hmm. it doesn't need to have more squares, but just. Uh, a little bit more scale would have been cool. So maybe enhance the visuals. Maybe yeah. like a deluxe game with uh, with five and six player expansion would be really neat that to see from cool. these yeah. deeper games. So yeah, I'd be that's, interested that's to see thought. it. <laughs> so I generally that's been our opinion. So once again, check it out. Peacekeeper Games is the uh, first introduction. Curious to see what more they have to offer. Kirk, keep working on it. And we'd like to see what else you do. And mm-hmm, um, absolutely, yeah. And thank you very much for watching. Come check out our other videos. See you later. See ya. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.